Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Redmi K20 Pro, the Mi 9D Pro and we are talking about the Shapeshifter. Now Shapeshift OS has been a pretty good ROM so far. A lot of people have liked it. I've liked it personally. The name itself is very, very unique and stuff like that. We do have a new build available. I've installed it in the last two, three days and I've been using it since then while traveling. And this is a first look at what's new and what's not, what are the bugs and how's it running, what are the benchmark numbers, should you install it or not. But before we get into all of that, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video. In the description of each video, you will find a link to our Telegram community where you have more than a thousand like-minded people chatting with each other, so join us there. Last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. Alright, so as always, what do we have here? Shapeshift OS 2.8 Duosion. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that correctly, but it is based on Android 11, updated on the 19th of November 2021. It comes with OSS vendor, depends on Android 11 vendor plus firmware, not Android 10. GApps is included out of the box. Heating and thermals have improved significantly. Notification LED issue fixed. Other three side changes can be seen here. MIUI vendor based build released here. Situation about ANX camera and touch sampling rate is explained here. So go ahead and click there. Try not to mirror builds, give some motivation. I highly recommend not to mirror builds. Now, right off the bat, as you can see over here, the animation of Shapeshift OS is pretty, pretty neat. It works really, really smooth. To the left, you do have your Google feed, which works like a charm. I've not had any major issues. From the top to bottom, you have your quick tiles. And if you long press over here, you do have your launcher in which you have quite a few customization options in Shapeshift OS. So that's something pretty, pretty neat. At the same time, you do have styles and wallpapers over here, as you can see. So you, you can go ahead and make a lot of changes over here including changes to your always on display. For example, if you hit apply over here and let's see if we have double tap to wake, there you go. And the FOD over here works like a charm. You have your Google Assistant shortcut over here that works great as well. Now, if we talk about the quick tiles over here, you will see that you do have quite a lot of options over here. Smart pixels, dark theme, screen recorder, and moving on your switch data card, compass, USB tethering, always on display, sensors, gaming mode, live display. So, you know, all these features are available in quick tiles itself. And that's pretty, pretty neat. If you go to the screen recorder, you do have a ton of options over here. Limit recording to 15 gigs, device audio and microphone. So let's start. You do get a start timer over here. And the screen recording has started. As you can see over here, I don't really see any stutters at all. It's running smooth as ever. And you can go ahead and stop the recording from here. There you go. Now moving on, you do have your built-in gaming mode as well. As you can see over here, you have options like block notifications, disable automatic brightness, disable USB debugging, ringer in gaming mode, gaming mode indication, dynamic mode and stuff like that. Now let's quickly move to settings over here. And the moment you move to settings, you have this force close that is happening for me. First time in Shapeshift OS, I'm facing a force close error, but nothing to worry. Since the time I'm using the ROM, I've had this, you know, seven or eight times. And the moment you click on close app, nothing happens. I've not seen any application crash or any adverse effects of this force close notification. And uh, someone from the Shapeshift team, if you're looking at this, this is a good time to go ahead and address this bug. Now the settings menu on Shapeshift OS looks pretty, pretty different. And the first thing that you see over here is the customization of Shapeshift OS. Now you do have customization in separate sections over here. And as I have always been saying, if you're going to lay out your customization menu in a presentable way, people will like the ROM, they will like to use it. And that is what is going on over here. You have customization for your power button. You have customization for your navigation. Gestures can be customized. And at the same time, volume rocker customization is there. Then you have quick settings, themer, heads up, pulse visualizer, battery options, clock options, network indicator, status bar items, native controls, general options, finger on display, animated FOD icon, 
One UI 3. Let's see over here. There you go. And fingerprint animation. Have they added any Samsung's over here? So let's go to OnePlus. Screen of FOD, disable night light when showing FOD. All the advanced options are present. Wow. So FOD is one thing that on this particular build for me has been working really, really great in dark areas, in light areas, finger on display. And you do see that you have a lot of customization over here. There was one McLaren animation, which I really like. Let's have a look. There you go. So the FOD is working absolutely gorgeous and that makes this ROM even more desirable. You do have your general options in customization over here. And at the last, you have miscellaneous LED settings, gaming mode and general notifications. So Shapeshift OS, one of the highlights of this particular ROM has been that it has a ton of customization and it works really, really great. You have your force close notification there again. Now, if you go to the battery section, you do have a ton of options here as well, including thermal profiles, right? So you can go ahead and set the thermal profiles and the battery life for me has been pretty decent. I've not had any major issues with the battery life or the charging speeds for that matter. Overall, you know, this ROM doesn't boot with a lot of bloatware. It is a very, very basic and slim ROM and it works really, really great apart from this force close notification that I have been getting in the settings menu of Shapeshift OS. Now, as I said, you know, this particular ROM works really great. You can definitely use it as a daily driver. Widevine L1 works. Your Play Store certification is working absolutely fine. Your safety net doesn't have any issue and you do have a decent camera included, which is the Google Camera Go as well. So all in all, pretty neat features. Let's have a look at the benchmark numbers and then maybe we'll decide do we need to do a gaming review on Shapeshift OS or not? 186, 455 GIPS and the CPU throttle to 92%. Pretty, pretty solid score there. Let's go ahead and have a look at Geekbench here real quick. 738 single core, 2514 multi-core. Pretty decent score. Antutu did not run because on most of the custom ROMs, Antutu doesn't really work well. So we have Geekbench and we have CPU throttle test and I think I will definitely go ahead and do a gaming review on this particular ROM. Let me know in the comment section, do you want me to do a complete review and a gaming review or just the gaming review of Shapeshift OS? So far, the OSS build has been pretty amazing. Good performance, good battery life, amazing amount of customization features. A big thumbs up to Shapeshift team for doing a great job. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think about this video? Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.